They measure what 30 years of aging does on their cardiovascular system. And do you want to know what is insane? Yes. 30 years of aging was not worse than what three weeks of bed rest did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's crazy. It was not worse than three weeks of bed rest in terms of their cardiorespiratory fitness, which I personally think is one of the best markers for longevity that we can measure, VO2 max. Everyone's How often are you studying it? I've actually never tested my VO2 max. I, so I How often do you test yeah, it? Good question. Okay, so embarrassingly, I do an estimator for it. I have so how do you measure VO2 max? Okay. So you put the mask on. You have on, to you go have to the into a place. lab. Like, yeah, yeah. You have to go to really precisely yeah. measure it. You get a lab and you can Google but you're doing your whatever. Apple Watch. Right. You, I do my Apple Watch, but also there's something called the 12 minute run test, which mm. is a good way to Estimate, do it. Huh? It's actually a little better than the Apple Watch, I think. So what you'd have to do is because your Apple Watch is measuring. So I do a lot of running, but I do a lot of trail running, and trail running is like hills, okay, mm -hmm. and you run slower when you're on hill, running on a hill, right? Yes. And so your true VO2 max, you want to have a flat surface where you're running. So you have to yeah. find like a track field and you want to run as, as fast as you can maintain for that 12 minutes. So it has to be a sustainable 12 minute speed. You don't want to go too fast, but you, you don't want to go too out. slow. Yeah. Right. So it has to be like a sustainable speed that you're, you're really pushing hard, but you're able to sustain that for 12 minutes. And you do that 12 minute run test on a flat, flat track. So you do it on a track so you, also, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just have to have measure your distance. So measure okay. your distance that you ran and the time. And then there's an equation you can plug it into. It's called the Cooper test. And that'll give you pretty much that's what your Apple Watch is doing. Yeah. Um, or your whatever device that's measuring VO2 max is doing something similar. But again, if you're just using like I use my Apple Watch and I, I look at it, I'm like, oh, but it's like. I'm running on all these hills. Yeah. It's not really like <clears throat> true, right? You need a flat. So it could be a tr flat treadmill or like a track. And what do you get? Well, you get the distance, the time, and then what? Um, that's all you need. You need to know the distance and your time. And then I'll and tell then you. And there's an equation. And then the equation tells you your VO2 max. Yeah. There's like an equation. I don't remember. Based on it. your height and weight or is this like. Um, no. So, you're, so, so it's not. No, it's not. No. no. Then you can like compare what your VO2 max is based on your height and your, your gender and your weight and all that. Okay, like, your age and all that stuff, yeah. Right, you'll, you'll know where you your rank. category, You'll yeah. know where you rank, right? Oh, like I'm supposed to be here, but I'm... Top 10%. Right, top, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But, um, and one of the best ways to improve VO2 max is high intensity interval training. So uh -huh. there's been those studies done where like, wow. even people that are doing, so what's the, the what, what do we hear about physical activity requirements? We hear two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise a week, right? That would be, you know, the kind of exercise where you can, the talk test. So you can talk, you can have a, sort of have a conversation, but you're breathy, Yes. right? Um, but you should be doing how much HIIT training a week? Well, so this is where- You can't talk. Right, well that, well so that- it, How many minutes a it, week? It all depends, right? Yeah. So, so people that are doing two and a half hours of this moderate intensity, about 40% of those people still can't improve their VO2 max until they add in the high intensity, right. Ah. Now, the question is, well, how much? Well, how much do you want to improve, right? I mean, obviously, you don't want to, like, burn out, like, like all your exercises hit. Like, it's a bit much, right? But, um, you know, if you're doing some of the best ways to do it would be, like, a longer interval. So, like, a one-minute interval of, like, going harder. Or there's the Norwegian 4x4. This is one of the best ways to improve your... VO2 max, and that is where you go four minutes at, at an intensity um, that's pretty high that you can maintain and sustain for that entire four minutes. Usually it's about 85% max heart rate. So you're going pretty hard um, for the entire four minutes, as hard as you can maintain for the entire four minutes. And then you rest for three minutes. Wow. Rest as in low intensity, very low. You want your heart rate to come down. And then you do it repeat, four, so you do it four times. And that is one of the best ways to improve your cardiorespiratory fitness. And in fact, that same guy, researcher, Dr. Ben Levine, that I talked about with the Dallas, it's called the Dallas Bed Rest Study. It's just phenomenal. Interesting. Well, he, in my opinion, has done an even more interesting study where um, he took 50 year olds, so he and his colleagues, his lab, they took 50 year olds that were sedentary. So, no, they weren't physically active, but they hadn't been identified with any other disease besides sedentarism, which I think is a disease. Oh. They hadn't been identified with type 2 diabetes or hypertension or anything else. So they were, quote unquote, what they would call healthy, right? Um, but they didn't work out. But they didn't work out. So I wouldn't call them healthy, but this is what you 
They, they were diseaseless. They were disease free. Yeah. Yeah. No, but they were sedentary, so I wouldn't right, that's say a disease. that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, but they took them and they put them on a two-year, pretty intense exercise intervention protocol. Okay. They probably transformed. Unbelievable. They, they didn't even look like the same person. They okay, so they went from not exercising to five to six hours of physical activity a week. A large portion of that they were doing what's called maximal maximal. Um, maximal sustainable intensity so you're you're doing it's a lot of vigorous exercise you're like 80 percent max heart rate 75 80 percent max heart rate and then they were doing the norwegian four by four once wow. a week and they didn't start them out with this right out the gate it was like the first six months was it like progressive yeah, yeah. right and after the two years okay so as we age our hearts get smaller and stiffer okay smaller and stiffer as we age and that affects not only our exercise capacity but it affects our cardiovascular disease risk our heart attack risk hypertension risk right all of these things are connected. So after those two years of, you know, five to six hours of physical, pretty good physical exercise every single week, their hearts looked 20 years younger in terms of structure. Holy their structure. Cow. 20 years younger. So they were 50. And if you look just at the, 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 the structure of the heart, their hearts look like 30 year olds. Wow. Incredible. And it's really, I think, a, a, a very motivating piece of evidence that's like, it's never too late, right? It's never too late, 50. They're doing this at 50, so it's never too late. But also just look what, look what exercise can do, Wow. right? And that's like, for me, I like to understand, and I get this like dopamine, and I'm like, oh yes, like this is what I can do, I'm, I'm on it, you know? And it's, yeah. it's like, that's, it helps me adopt a, a type of, you know, protocol where I'm, I'm doing, you know, my exercise and I'm motivated, and that's, that was definitely part of it too. Sure. Where